I didn't know if anybody was going to say anything about me, but obviously yeah, not. Like, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry, hold on, let me, let me have a drink first, and you can tell me to stop when you start falling asleep. Right? Stop. Okay. <laughs> That wasn't that funny, I don't know. <laughs> right, okay, so um, I'm absolutely flabbergasted, really. This is history, this really is history. Few people are obviously not here, but you know, it, it really is fantastic. So I'm gonna read this now, um, and I was actually planning to be in Shenzhen for a meeting yesterday. And I said something to Gemma, or Anna said something to you about me maybe staying on. Um, but I, I, had to, I didn't know anything about this, and I said to Gemma, is something happening? And she said yes, so I thought I'd better be here. Um, <laughs> uh, so, and she just said yes, so here I am. Um, I don't know whether, I mean obviously I wasn't, but I, I don't know whether I was expected to say a few words. So on the flight back from Hong Kong on Friday night, I decided to make some notes, but the only paper I could write on was a sick bag, from the, the pocket in front of me. Um, so I made a few notes and uh, I thought I'd type it up. Um, it does seem a bit cheesy, but 30 years really does seem like as it was yesterday. And I know, I know Barry's not here, but he is responsible for me, for us, the whole company, um, going back all that time. And I was in the same class as Barry at school and met up with him again in the 80s at the Spring Fair and uh, at the time we were selling microwave cookware. And we kept in touch and mainly f at the Spring Fair and uh, I'd been through a couple of redundancies and whatever and um, I was actually settled in a new job when I got a call from Barry, remember? Got a call from... Yeah. Barry, can I put my leg down? A call from Barry and he, he was looking to recruit somebody and um, apparently he says that he was in the bath and when they came, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, but, <laughs> but it's true, it's what he would say. So anyway, to cut a long story short, he offered me a job and I, I obviously refused, um, mainly because I felt a little bit insecure. But um, we were also building an extension at home, we had a baby on the way and that's the result of my 30 year old baby here. Um, <laughs> And um, then, I, then I thought that actually it was a young company, it was literally around the corner in Bushy, you know, what could I lose? I mean, if, if it didn't turn out, well, I'd just get another job. Anyway, I started with him and his words at the time is you won't be bored. And, you know, 30 years, on, I'm certainly not bored. Um, so, but also, I, I don't know if anybody knows, but Shaw Spence is actually 50 years old this year. Um, and Nick Shaw, who was the owner at the time, only gave us five years before we went out of business. And I think that it's all of us here that have kept the company going. Um, he was a positive chap. He was a <laughs> He was actually, thank, thank God I never worked for him, but he was Captain Birdseye, if anybody remembers him, he had a, he had a push of it. I still think he's alive. Um, <laughs> I still think it's going, but we are talking a few years ago. Um, anyway, it gave us five years. So when I started, there was just six of us. Um, Barry, Mark, Peter and Gwen, who's sitting here, um, looking brilliant. Absolutely. I've got that. Oh. Yeah. And, Anna. <laughs> and uh, in fact, Anna's the longest serving. She's been here 31 years. Um, I mean... Looking back, those days we had real fun, and when you're a small company, um, we can get away with a lot of things and that you probably couldn't get away with now. Um, it's only when the company grew <laughs> did things become a lot more serious as new customers came on board, um, in particular the supermarkets. Um, what's happened in 30 years, a lot's changed. Uh, communication, um, gone are the days when faxes were stuffed under our hotel room doors. Telex. That, that was before that, Simon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was before. I remember, oh, was, uh, but I remember the machine, but I never actually used it. it. <laughs> did, we, at Gwen, did we ever have a Telex machine? No, I don't think so. Right? Oh, um, yeah. and, and I remember the very first day I started, we had a, I had a computer screen on my desk. 
and I turned it round because I didn't know how to use it. I still, I still don't. Gary will say, I still don't know how to use computers. Technophone. Exactly. So, Jane, this is your bit, wherever you are. So I put here, um, in the beginning I used a dictaphone and we had a receptionist, Jane, who would type my faxes for me and I'm sure you left because you were sick of hearing me. <laughs> Um, I actually went out for Far East in 1989. Sorry, this time I'm only on the first page. I, I went out for Far East in 1989, but I started travelling soon after when I joined Shaw Spencer, uh, initially going to Portugal and Italy, which is where um, the ceramics are coming from. And I've got a very Portuguese friend here from um, many years ago, Portuguese Scottish, I should say. Um, um, Simon, son of the lovely Malcolm Leslie, um, who was our agent in Portugal. And I didn't have this because I didn't know you were going to be here, so I'm sort of ad living. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we all wondered who Jane was. I didn't. And I did. And, uh, and then travelled all over Asia, and, and I, I've always felt very privileged for you know travelling to these countries on, on business. So I, I think we take a lot for granted, but it's still um, it's still a privilege for me, and be very very lucky. Um, I don't. <laughs> if I had my time again, I would learn the language. Um, I know a few letter, a few words, but they don't help, like um, ice cream or, or watermelon. But fun anyway, song, fun, fun song. song. Yeah, I know, I know a few words. Um, so over the years, I've travelled with customers and colleagues, and have very rarely had a difficult trip. Um, but there were a couple that spring to mind. Um, Gary's not here, but there are stories, some of which I can repeat, some of which I can't, uh, maybe because I've forgotten. Um, but um, if anything did go wrong on a trip, it was Ian. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was the, it was always the one that something happened to, am I right? Whether it was uh, food poisoning. Uh, in Bangladesh, yep. pilot. we were all fine, we had the same thing, <laughs> had be a, a near-death experience there, but another near-death experience was on a flight, yep. on an internal flight, I mean, I was pleased flights have got a bit better, than, but it was so bad, even I was crossing my <laughs> it, it, it really was a, a white-knuckle ride. It was. Um, we thought one of the engines was gone or something like that. <laughs> and then... Um, and I, I'm going to tell the story that I repeated before, that um, it was only a few years ago, um, Ian used a suitcase that my daughter, Laura, I can tell you, that you had the handle, wouldn't pull up. I don't know if you remember that. You don't. Okay, well, he put it in the boot of his car, and he took it away to the Far East. And I remember coming out of Hong Kong, Wang Chai Station, Wang Chai Wang Chai Station. Station. we'd already lost Gary on the platform, <laughs> and it was, it was pouring with rain. And he goes to pull the handle up and it wouldn't come up and he said, what the hell's going on here? And we had that we all words that effect. But he, we've done a lot of trips and it's certainly been great fun. Um, it's a shame Gary's not here, um, but you know, he's, he's, he's looking after his mother who we hope is going to be very well, we hope. Um, so going back to the business side, we had two major customers in the old days, Argos and BHS. And then I um, was handed BHS, and that was my baby. And again, when Nick Shaw um, started on his journey, he was an agent, and we had agency customers, they all left. Um, in the olden days, there was a supply chain with all layers in between. But it was, I was in Malaysia with our agent, a company called AAG, who warned me that the way of doing business is going to change, and that customers will be start to buy direct. Am I right, everybody? Yeah. yeah. And um, we, they would use us and abuse us to show how it was going to be done. And Barry laughed because BHS at the time were pretty useless at buying from a UK warehouse. So how could they possibly buy direct? Again, um, I'll never forget the time they told us they wanted total transparency and wanted a complete listing of our factory base. And understandably, we didn't want to give it. But we had no choice. So retailers buying directly, opening their own offices in Asia was happening, and we were a middleman, and we just had to justify our existence to bring added value. At the time, we were working with trading companies in Taiwan, but it was clear we had to get closer to the factory prices. 
So we opened an office in Hong Kong in 1997. Those who were around at the time will remember that. And uh, Kevin, who unfortunately not here today, stayed out there for a period of six months to, to manage the office. In 2004, we opened our office in Shenzhen, working out of an apartment run by a guy called Murphy. Um, good old Murphy. Good old Murphy. And, um, and then uh, the following year, we opened the office in Shenzhen in 2005. And John, you might remember that. I'd imagine that you remember it. Um, yeah, yes, we did. And that was a nightmare. And we closed the office, must have been 2007, 2008 in Hong Kong. I've always been immensely proud of our China office during the last 19 years. The staff are very hard working and have remained very loyal to the company. And I've always maintained that the biggest asset to any company is its staff. And you guys have stayed with us quite, quite a long time. You guys in China have stayed with us. And, you know, that, that must say something about the ethos of the company. Um, through, over the years, business has never been easy, but we still survived. Um, we started supplying ASDA uh, on an FOB basis 2006. Next came on board next in 2013, and we didn't really want to work with them. It was really against our better judgment. Sorry, Vicky, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they were a No, we love them. No, we love them. And, uh, yes. and, I said they were a nightmare. <laughs> and when um, Angela, when you handled it, it was also a nightmare as well. So they're a very difficult company to deal with. But there was one time, I, I was in the car in China and I got a call from, I still can't remember her name. Um, who was it? Can't remember her name. Anyway, she said, we've got a problem, can we help? And that's 10 years ago. And we're now, here's Gemma, a little bit of help from myself. They're, we're their biggest supplier within home, am I right? Yeah, well done. Um, so again, retailers want to start buying direct and I was on a particularly difficult trip when um, they asked a man on the ground, a guy called Stone Wren, and uh, remember Stone? Yes. He was given his name by Flora in Hong Kong. The reason they called him Stone was because Stoneware. And I'm sure he's never thanked her for that. It's very, very, very true. That's one for the grandkids. It's very true. And they also approached our, our main factory. I mean, these are all bosses now. You know, they approached the factory. They wanted a deal direct and um, they declined, which says a lot about us as a company. And a lot about next. Uh, well, no, yeah. So then we... Then we um, received at the time the biggest compliment from Nets that they realised they couldn't do everything themselves and that we had fully justified our position and brought it added value to their business. which was great for us, but, and I don't want to embarrass John, but I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to say that um, our out outgoing technologist, Dawn, who John had a very close relationship with, um, she had the biggest compliment of all. And this is what she said, thanks very much for being the best supplier we've had over the years. I couldn't have managed the range without your team being so good at managing factories and sorting problems. And that does come as a bit of a surprise because we had many, many reworks. <laughs> and many, many, many problems. So obviously we don't, we don't know what other companies were like. But, but, but um, Anyway, this is, you know, I said to you, John, when I wrote to you, this is much a testament to you and the team for, to, for, for, her, for her saying that. Um, anyway, we've got a new technologist, and the first thing that she's written to us about is some exploding mug. So um, we can o it can only get better. It can only get better. So nothing's changed. We haven't learned from it. So um, now, Paul, now Paul has gone. You have to report back. Three years ago, we were acquired by Paul. Barry and Kevin retired from Shaw Spencer, and I was really excited about prospects for the future. Um, as we all know, COVID then took over and it felt that our lives were put on hold for three years. Working from home became the new normal. Yes. <laughs> 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 Something <laughs> 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 
You like John and Anne. <laughs> it's all right. He's so protected by the dog. dog <laughs> the dog, when when the I try and go in and fish something out from the printer, the dog grabs at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, working from home became the new normal where it was unheard of before. And for me, I hated just looking at a computer screen and missing travelling to China and everything that goes along with that. Uh, when restrictions were lifted this year, we went to Ambiente, which was fantastic, to actually meet people, look at product, and I just uh, got back from a five-week stint in China, splitting it up because I had to come back, just so you keep Alison happy, uh, in the middle, and, and it, it was absolutely lovely, and we just need to maximise these opportunities. Um, at one point, Paul, who's not here, suggested that I'd lost my mojo, but I can assure you if I did, it's well and truly back. Things have obviously changed from 30 years on, but we have to say it's progress. Retailers have become more and more demanding. Next have their own web-based system, which is a nightmare. Sorry. You can report back. Um, I mean, fortunately, now I'm old. Old, older. Yeah. I don't. I don't have to get involved in any of the rubbish. It's any. any <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't have to get involved in any of that. They really. All of them have become more uh, demanding. We've got FSC. We've got ETUI. You've got sustainability. Forget it for me. Okay. Um, so, so even the way of selling has changed. Now I don't get this because I'm not. On, I'm not on it. But you've got influences. You've got TikTok. You've got Instagram. TikTok. <laughs> Sorry. TikTok. 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 Sorry. TikTok. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, somebody should start TikTok. It's only. <laughs> Okay. You did it on purpose. Uh, before I finish, before I finish, you were talking. Oh, obviously, a big thank you to Gemma who has brought you all together, which is amazing. Well done. supported me for all these years. Now, I didn't know the kids were going to be here, so I've got to thank you as well, because obviously yeah. I haven't been around very much since you've been growing up. So um, maybe in a few years' time I'll be around. Um, <laughs> so those who might know me quite well, I, I do complain and moan a lot. Yes. And um, swear. <laughs> and swear. And swear. Yeah, a lot. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed i've loved working for sure spencer from day one and i still thoroughly enjoy the business whether it's interacting with the customers although as i get older they are getting younger it's it's so uh, Gemma has to take over but um, um <laughs> actually that's very true you still, you still, you still look very young you still look very very young but you're nearer to their age than me but but they have they they, they are getting younger um, and I still get a buzz out of going to the factories and exhibitions and all this sort of thing. Um, and my final point, and again, he's not here. I'd therefore like to continue working as long as possible, as long as Paul wants me to. Okay. So, uh, I, I'm just thank you for all coming. And um, I mean, there was a suggestion actually that. There's another 30 years in me. I don't think there is. Mm. Um, better not be. No, I don't think there is, but I am planning, hopefully, to get, keep going, and I love it. I'm really so happy that you're all here uh, to share. Aww. He's crying, he's crying.